Hey, welcome back to Garden Rose. My name is Mary and thanks for stopping by to see what I'm up to today. I have made today my official potato day because I have a few potato projects that I've been wanting to do. First of which is my sweet potatoes. So these are the sweet potatoes that I grew this past year and you can see some of them did okay, some of them did not so okay. But I figured that instead of chopping them up and using them for a little snack or a small side dish, I would try to grow... Yeah, you like sweet potatoes? No, don't eat it. Um, I figured I would try to grow my own sweet potato slips from these sweet potatoes. I'm hoping that they work. I don't know if because they're smaller, they're not gonna grow as many slips. This one's already starting. So I have hope that it'll work a little bit, but like I said, it's better than just getting rid of them. It's better than nothing. So why not try it as a little experiment to see what we can do. And if it's not working out, I'll just go get some more sweet potatoes and maybe we can add them to this. So what I have here is some sawdust and some sand. I'm doing a 50-50 mixture to try and let these sweet potatoes grow some slips. Um, I got the sawdust from my dad, so thanks dad, shout out to you. If you saw any of my previous videos this past year, you might have seen my fish fertilizer um, video where I got the fish carcasses from my parents who love to go fishing and I, you know, I'm turning that into fish fertilizer. I'm trying to turn that into fish fertilizer. So I still have to check on that, but that'll be another video. But I bring that up to say that I get my love of having different hobbies and wanting to try out a bunch of different things from my dad, um, big fisherman, big, big woodworking guy. So he has a lot of sawdust laying around and I figured why not put it to good use and see if there's something I can try to do with it. So I get a lot of the scraps that my dad doesn't use and I can find fun ways to try to do things with it. So I'm going to just mix this together. Um, I've heard that you can use either one to try and grow sweet potato slips, but the sand try or the sand tends to hold on to moisture too much. Wow, oh, this smells really good. You can smell the wood. Um, the sand holds on to too much moisture and the sawdust dries out too quickly. So mixing it together should give a good moisture level, a good combination of the two. All right, I think that's pretty well mixed. So I will bring you in closer and show you how I'm gonna put these sweet potatoes in. All right, so from what I've seen, you just want them pretty well buried within the medium, whatever you're using. And some people say to put in, some people do it in water and just let them root in water. And um, I thought about trying that out, but since they're so small, I figured I would give them more surface area to hopefully grow some slips so I wanted to have more coverage in them so I don't know if that will work or if that makes sense at all but that's just how my brain is thinking about this um, if you're doing it in water you want to make sure that you have the right end in the water because the slips will only grow out of one end I believe it's oh well let's see yeah so it's that top part so I guess this would be the top and that would be the bottom so the pointier end will be where the slips grow out of. Um, so let's see. And I'm gonna leave that on. I know it doesn't look that great, but I'm not gonna take it off. I'm gonna leave it on and maybe we'll see if it does something.
the sand was already wet when I put it in. It was just a little bit moist from the bag that it was in. But I think that sawdust is gonna soak up that moisture pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray these. Looks like that'll keep the sawdust down too. So it's not flying all over the place. And that's really just getting the top layer actually. So maybe I'll put just a drizzle. I'm gonna make sure they're not too buried. Sweet potatoes are actually a bit tropical, so they like warm and dark environments. So I am going to put those in my basement because that's the darkest place that I have. And I'm actually gonna put them on the heating mat that I have because I'm not using it right now anyway. And why not try to keep them warmer? So I'm, I'm, I might throw one of the seed starting lids that I have over that tray just to make sure that it doesn't dry out too fast, but I'm gonna to try to be diligent about checking it every day, maybe more than maybe more than once a day, just to make sure that it's not drying out too fast with that sawdust. But just in these next couple of days, getting the hang of how much I'm gonna to need to water it and make sure that it's staying moist. Because if the sweet potatoes shrivel up, then they're not gonna be any good to me at all. So we'll try this out throw this down in the basement and keep you updated with how that goes. But my next potato project is digging into those red skin potatoes that I have from the garden this past year and figuring out what I want to do with those. So let's get into the kitchen. Oh, right. Here are, this is heavy, all my potatoes. <laughs> Here's all the potatoes that I'm working with and I want to go through, I think what I'm going to do is dice some up for my freezer to have on hand for easy, like, potatoes in the morning for breakfast. Um, and then I think I'm going to try french fries. I might only try it with a few because I've never done it before and I don't want to use a bunch of potatoes for something that might not turn out well. So I might try some in sticks for french fries. And then I wanna keep a good amount. I grabbed this basket so I can keep some still just for storage. They've been storing in my garage pretty well. I mean, we'll go through them and see what's underneath all the top ones. But the top ones are looking good. Um, so I think that they're doing all right. So I'll keep some in storage just for fresh potatoes. Um, maybe try some mashed potatoes, throwing them in different dinners, things like that. So I'm going to go through, sort them out and see, maybe I'll keep the best ones that are looking good in here and see what we've got to work with for the other ones. All right. So here's what I'm deciding to keep. I'm actually really impressed with how well these are keeping. Um, so I'm going to put these back in the garage because that seems to be working. This is a good amount that I feel good about keeping aside, especially having all of these to work with and do something fun with, preserve in a different way, just so we have them. And if these end up going bad or growing eyes or anything like that, maybe I'll just keep them to plant this upcoming gardening year. Um, otherwise, I'll just buy more seed potatoes to start with. But good backup plan just in case. So I'll start washing these and we'll get to dicing them up. I found a sweet potato. So I'm gonna put this guy back with his friends down in my new 
sweet potato slip creation center. Um, I hate peeling sweet potatoes. I already took off a little bit of my nail. I don't, I don't know. Next year, I'm going to have a potato peeling party. You're all invited. BYOP. Bring your own potatoes, but also bring your own peeler because mine apparently doesn't work that well. Okay, so I peeled all of these smaller ones that I thought would be good to chop up into cubes. And then I saved a lot of the larger ones that I think might make longer fries. So I had to break in between. I'm gonna do them two separate um, kind of batches so I can give myself a break from peeling. So I'm gonna start dicing up those ones and I'll have those boiling because you have to boil them for a little bit before you freeze them. So I'll have those boiling while I peel these biggins for the fries. I didn't really do the best time management. I should have got that boiling pot. I should have got that pot boiling while I finished up these potatoes so that they were ready to go in once I was done, but I didn't do that. So my water's coming up to a boil and I have all those potatoes chopped into dices. I decided to just do them all dices. I kept going back and forth if I wanted to do like hash browns or dices or maybe slices, but I figured it was easier just to have them all one way and I know I like diced potatoes, like for breakfast. And I think they're easier to cook up that way than shredded. And I wasn't really too impressed with how my shredded potatoes turned out when I did them um, at the end of the year, last year, or the end of the summer. Um, I think I did them too fine. And so then when I boiled them and dried them out to put them in the freezer to like flash freeze before putting them in a bag, they all clumped into like one giant sheet potato. So we haven't tried using them yet. We'll probably get to that soon because it's part of the pantry challenge and they're in the freezer. So I want to use them. So maybe they'll break apart. Maybe it'll work out all great when we go to use them. But I just figured diced would be a good thing to try and maybe a little bit easier. So I'm going to boil them for about a minute once that water comes up to boil and I will start cutting my French fries. Move over McDonald's, there's a new fry maker in town. Some of these are actually really big and like long, really good sizes, so I'm very excited about that. I still have this bowl of fries and three more potatoes to cut. So I have a lot more fries than I was planning on doing. I was only gonna save a few for fries to see how they turned out. So I don't know if that means I should dice the rest of these. I don't know. If you guys have done anything with potatoes, um, let me know, give me some ideas if you don't mind dropping them in the comments because other than saving them for when I wanna make mashed potatoes or, 
I don't know, I guess diced hash browns and fries are the main things coming to my mind for how to preserve them for the freezer. But I, I know there's gotta be other things out there and other ways to save potatoes. I do have a dehydrator. I would love to get a freeze dryer, but that's not in the budget right now. So dehydrator, I don't know if I can like make mashed potatoes and then dehydrate them to rehydrate later. If anyone's done that, let me know. I don't know. I'd love to get some ideas though, because I feel like I'm, I don't feel like I'm wasting these because I know we'll use them, but I just feel like there's something more creative or better I could do with them. So I don't know, just an internal struggle right now, but it's all working out. I'm glad I'm getting these preserved and just doing something with them before they sit too long and start to go bad. So thanks for joining me on potato day. I know I didn't show you too much, but it's really just been peeling and chopping. That's it. It's taken me a few hours now, but that's okay. I had a lot of coffee, so I'll be up for a while doing this and it's going to be fun. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure as always. Um, check out my channel if you want to see some of the other projects that I'm doing. I'm trying to do one project per week for the pantry challenge. Um, so this week was potato preservation. I also have some tomatoes that I want to preserve. I have some diced up peppers that I want to turn into cowboy candy. And I'm sure there's other things I can find to do. So a project per week will keep my to-do list short. It's going to be fun. So subscribe, follow along if you want to check it out. And feel free to comment any thoughts, encouragement, ideas. I love to hear from you. So thanks. See you on the next one.